In his State of the Union address this week, President Biden made a point to focus on kitchen table issues that impact ordinary Americans like junk fees, prescription drug costs, and even concert prices. And then yesterday, House Republicans, led by their de facto speaker, Marjorie Taylor Greene, decided to respond by focusing on an issue that really matters to Americans. Why did Twitter censor Hunter Biden's nudes? For more on this, <laughs> it's time for a closer look. Say what you want about Biden, but on Tuesday he made a clear choice to focus on economic populism as the predominant theme of his speech. He talked about everything from breaking up big tech monopolies to capping the price of insulin, eliminating junk fees at hotels and airlines, and even cracking down on inflated ticket prices for concerts. Look, I don't know for sure, but I'm starting to think Joe Biden might be a secret Swifty, just sitting at his computer, <laughs> just refreshing Ticketmaster over and over again. Mr. President, we need you in the Situation Room. Hold your horses, I'm number 8,000 in the queue. I think I, I think I got a shot. Oh, Taylor, look what you made me do. In fact, there were even times when it seemed like Biden was maybe taking some rhetorical flourishes from Donald Trump, but instead of just talking out of his ass like Trump does, Biden was backing it up with actual policy. Tonight, I'm announcing new standards require all construction materials using federal infrastructure projects to be made in America. And on my watch, American roads, bridges, and American highways are gonna be made with American products as well. My economic plan is about investing in places and people that have been forgotten. Too many people have been left behind and treated like they're invisible. Outside of Columbus, Ohio, Intel is building semiconductor factories on 1,000 acres. Last year, I cracked down, with the help of many of you, on foreign shipping companies that were making you pay higher prices for every good coming into the country. <laughs> Americans are tired of being. We're tired of being played for suckers. Biden basically took Trump's rhetorical shtick, but backed it up with actual legislation. He even released it as a single called State of the Union Joe's Version. <laughs> the other difference is Biden did it without going on a bunch of insane tangents and exaggerating how many jobs he was creating. If that had been Trump, that speech would have been twice as long and he would have gone off script after every line. Intel is building a factory in Ohio. They were gonna build it in China, but then I became president and I called up the CEO. His name is Chip, Chip Intel, and I said, <laughs> I said, Mr. Intel, you better build that factory in Columbus. Columbus, we love Columbus, don't we? We love it. <laughs> Named after the great film director, Chris Columbus. He made, he made the movie Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, a movie I originally, I originally started. They cut most of my scenes. It was very sad. I remember a guy named Marv came up to me, big guy, tall guy, tears in his eyes, iron print on his face, and he said to me, you gotta help us catch this little and in particular, Biden focused on a bunch of real problems that people face every day. Like, for example, the high cost of essential medications or hidden fees. We capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month for seniors on Medicare. Let's cap the cost of insulin for everybody at $35. My administration is also taking on junk fees. We're making airlines show you the full ticket price up front. We reduce exorbitant bank overdrafts. We're cutting credit card late fees by 75%. We're gonna ban surprise resort fees that hotels charge on your bill. We can stop service fees on tickets to concerts and sporting events and make companies disclose all the fees up front. And we'll prohibit airlines from charging $50 round trip for family just to be able to sit together. Baggage fees are bad enough. Airlines can't treat your child like a piece of baggage. Drug prices, internet companies, junk fees. He basically took everything grandpa's complained about and turned it into a speech. <laughs> Why do they make thermostats that go all the way up to 77? Folks, we're gonna cap it at 68 and I'm mailing every American a sweater. <laughs> Another idea from that list that I think most people can probably get behind is capping service fees on concerts and sporting events. I mean, we all hate it when you click buy on some tickets that say they're 100 bucks, but then by the time you get to check out, they're double the price after you count up all the fees, and a lot of them don't even seem real. It's like service fee, transaction fee, internet fee, delivery fee, seating fee, fee, fee. Are you still reading fee? You can stop now, fee. It's only gonna get worse, fee. Why are you doing this, fee? Just click buy, fee. You're torturing yourself, fee. You're the one who wanted to see Billy Joel at MSG for the 14th time, fee. Bottle of red, fee. Bottle of white, fee. Are you done yet, fee? Go yourself, fee. So that's the kind of thing Biden was focused on. In his speech on Tuesday, of course, Joel probably also recalled that GOP heckled him for claiming some Republicans, like Senators Ron Johnson and Rick Scott, want to cut Social Security and Medicare. Scott and Johnson both proposed plans to sunset all federal legislation, which would include Social Security and Medicare, and require periodic votes to renew them. Right now, 
those programs are mandatory, but Johnson and Scott proposed putting them up for vote every five years, or in Johnson's case, every year. And yet when Biden brought it up, Republicans like Marjorie Taylor Greene called him a liar. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> Let me give you, anybody who doubts it, contact my office. I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. That means Congress doesn't vote. I'm not saying it's a majority of you. I don't even think it's even a significant. But it's being proposed by individuals. I'm not politely not naming them, but it's being proposed by some of you. I like Biden's passive-aggressive grandpa move of, I'm politely not naming them. <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna say who they are, but one guy's named after a penis and the other looks like one. <laughs> then yesterday, yesterday Biden showed up at a speech in Wisconsin with physical proof of the Republican proposals he had cited from Johnson and Scott to cut Medicare and Social Security. We've had a spirited debate last night <laughs> with my Republican friend. They seem shocked when I raised the plans of some of their members and their caucus to cut Social Security. And Marjorie Taylor Greene and others stood up and said, liar, liar. Well, guess what? You know, I remind you that Rick Scott from Florida, the guy who ran the U.S. Senate campaign, has a plan. I got his brochure right here. He has a plan. Here's what he says in his plan. Let me get open it up here. He says, all federal legislation sunsets every five years. If the law is worth keeping, Congress can pass it again. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Ron Johnson on Social Security and Medicare, quote, we should transfer everything. So we have to consider everything every year. No, I, I will, I do get nervous whenever Biden tries to use props. It's like when you sit down next to an old guy on a plane and he wants to show you pictures of the Thunderbird on his phone. Ah, I had this baby since 62. Hold on, let me, uh, How do I close out a candy crush? Hold on, ah. Oh, the, oh, the flashlight's on. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, God damn it, that's my niece. I called her by accident. Hi, honey. Ah, I'm with a nice man on the plane, honey. I gotta go. So that's what Biden's been focused on. House Republicans, meanwhile, held a hearing yesterday that I guess was supposed to be about censorship on Twitter, but in reality, it was just an opportunity to whine about how their personal Twitter accounts were treated before new owner Elon Musk took over. Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, for example, yelled at a bunch of former Twitter executives about why her personal Twitter account had been censored. Now, I would like you to watch this clip and try to decide whether you're watching an actual adult at an actual congressional hearing <laughs> or a high school sophomore yelling at a friend in the hallway after class. Did either of you approve the shadow banning of my account at Lauren Boebert? <laughs> yes or no? No, I did not. Not to the best of my recollection. I'll ask again. Did you shadow ban my account? Yes or no? Again, not to the best of my recollection. So the answer is, Mr. Roth, yes, you did. I found out last night from Twitter staff that you suppressed my account for this tweet. It's a freaking joke about Hillary Clinton being angry that she couldn't rig her election. It's a joke. But in response, being the sinister overlords that you all are, you placed a 90-day account filter so I could not be found. You silenced me from communicating with the American people over a freaking joke. Now, who the hell do you think that you are? It was a freaking joke, Kaylee, okay? I said it's cool you won prom queen, even though you're already the queen of bitches, Dan. It's a freaking joke. You overlord. Then there was the other Bobert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who similarly used her time to scold former Twitter employees for suspending her personal Twitter account after she repeatedly lied and spread dangerous misinformation about the pandemic and the COVID vaccine. Now, just a quick warning about this clip. Don't stare directly into her eyes unless you're <laughs> covering your eyes with lead-lined oven mitts. You can consider your speech canceled during my time because you canceled mine. You see, you permanently banned my personal Twitter account, and it was my campaign account also. January 2nd, 2002, you permanently banned 
my Twitter account. This was the account that I would put my campaign ads on, raise money on, fight back when attacked with lies. So while you coordinated with DHS, the FBI, the CIA, our government, and outside groups to permanently ban, shadow ban conservative Americans and candidates like me and the former president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump, you were censoring and wrongfully violating our First Amendment free speech rights. And you want to know something? Guess what? I'm so glad that you're censored down. I'm so glad you've lost your jobs. Thank God Elon, Elon Musk bought Twitter. The one cool thing about a Republican-led congressional hearing is it answers the question, what would Twitter look like if it was a physical room? <laughs> also, nothing says I'm a champion of the working class. Like, I'm glad you lost your jobs when the richest man in the world bought the company you worked for. You know, Green might actually benefit from Biden's new policies on airline fees because she's clearly carrying a lot of... Baggage. But so what? You might be thinking maybe Boebert and Green are a little self-obsessed, but surely the other Republicans in the room got down to the real issues at some point, like if Twitter had colluded with the Biden campaign in 2020 to have content they didn't like removed from the platform. Now, that might sound damning to you until you find out that, one, it didn't happen, and two, what the specific content in question actually was. Over my right shoulder, we have an email Reference, this is, this is Saturday, October 24th, uh, 5.39 p.m., referencing five different tweets this is a, a, with a Twitter email chain. Under the line, it's more to review from the Biden team. Do you know how many tweets were actually flagged and taken down at the behest of the Biden team? I wouldn't agree with the characterization of it as being at the behest of them. These tweets were reported, and Twitter independently evaluated them under its but the, rules. But the, but the email is very clear. More to review from Biden team. The response three hours later at the bottom, hold this up real quick so we can see. The request at the bottom, it says, handled these. What does handled these mean? My understanding is that these tweets contained non-consensual nude photos of Hunter Biden. Excuse me, Mr. Roth, but the American people are demanding to see Hunter Biden's nudes. <laughs> and you better not make them pay to see it. There's nothing worse than expecting a free peek at male genitals only to find out there are hidden fees, AKA... Junk fees. Now. <laughs> this is what Republicans are spending actual time on at a congressional hearing, aside from the fact that no one actually gives about any of this nonsense. It's also just wrong to say Republicans are somehow victims being persecuted by social media. Twitter did field requests from the Trump administration, the actual government at the time, to remove content that Trump didn't like. In fact, it was reported yesterday by Rolling Stone that Twitter kept an entire database of Republican requests to censor posts. And in the hearing, a Democratic member of the committee, Maxwell Frost, brought up one of those examples, which led to some explicit language being read into the congressional record. Earlier, you testified about a 2019 tweet um, that was about President Trump. And I think it was from uh, Ms. Teagan. What was the tweet about? Would you like me to give the direct quote? Yeah. Um, please excuse my language, this is a direct quote, but Chrissy Teigen referred to Donald Trump as a pussy ass bitch. Okay. Free speech. And what happened after Ms. Teigen posted her tweet? What did the White House do? What did the Trump White House do? From my understanding, the White House reached out to ask that this tweet be removed. First of all, the way she said, would you like me to give a direct quote, definitely <laughs> revealed she was more than happy to give the direct quote. <laughs> she probably carries that direct quote around with her at parties. Second, <laughs> I do enjoy that Donald Trump being called a pussy ass bitch is now an official part of the congressional record and only because he complained about it. Now, we didn't have to bleep any of those words. And by the way, they weren't bleeped on C-SPAN either, but only because C-SPAN can't afford a bleep button. Every. <laughs> Every now and then, C-SPAN will, like, scrape together enough money to bring in a guy to try to bleep stuff live. Chrissy Teigen referred to Donald Trump as a pussy bleep, ass bleep, bit. Bleep, bleep, Okay. <laughs> Once again, Joe Biden could not have asked for a more flattering contrast. Republicans are using their time in the House to throw tantrums about their Twitter accounts, getting suspended in Hunter Biden's nudes. Biden, meanwhile, is laser-focused on economic populism and kitchen table issues that actually matter to everyday people, even called out. Republican senators Rick Scott, Ron Johnson, and Mike Lee for their proposals to cut Social Security and Medicare. Three guys who are also known by their nicknames. Pussy ass bitch. 
Oh, they gotta bleep that. They probably bleeped there. This has been a closer look.